Hey everyone, Techni here with a keyboard review and I scooped this keyboard up for 20 bucks. Now I believe it was listed around like, I don't know, 23 and some change, but then you uh, got to apply a coupon and brought it right down to like 20 and some change. I believe right now as I'm filming this video, it's back up to regular MSRP, which is around 28, 29. But again, I scooped it up right around 20 bucks. So that's what I'm gonna review it off of. So anyways, this is a Vic. Tsing, I'm probably saying that wrong, Vic Tsing, it's, it's a Chinese company, I can't get that, that TS, Tsing, Tsing, Vic Tsing, I, I don't know, but uh, <laughs> anyways, model number PC149A Vic Tsing, that sounds, that sounds better, right, am I doing that right? Anyways, let's pop it open and see if it's worth that $20, right? You know what I'd actually like to do before I actually start looking over and talking about my opinion? I want to bring you guys in for some close-ups. I'll plug it in, get the RGB rolling and everything, because I want you guys to be on the same level as me, and then we can kind of talk about it together. So anyways, let me bring you in and show you. So as you just saw in those close-ups, in my opinion, I think it looks pretty good, right? I mean, that metal frame is what sold me. Again, when I was shopping online, I saw the price and it said metal frame. I pretty much stopped looking at anything else. I said, for that price, add to cart, check out. You know what I mean? Uh, metal frame, and again, right around at 20 bucks. I mean, you just couldn't go wrong, right? And like I said, as far as looks, I think it looks great. Most of you know I'm not a big RGB you know, fan. I mean, I like it. I think it's cool and everything, but I don't believe in paying extra money for it, right? And honestly, this guy, as you saw in the close-ups, that's all it does. It stays steady like this, or you can make it pulse uh, how we were doing in the close-ups. And the pulse honestly looks pretty cheesy. It doesn't like, it doesn't have this smooth breathe that like, it, you know, goes lower than off than back on. You know, it's not really nice, uh, smooth. You can speed it up and, uh, you know, slow it down if you like, and it smooths out a little bit. But again, you can't change any of the colors of the zones. You can't make it a steady color. It's pretty much just like this. And honestly, the uh, RGB looks good. Now, when you get to the RGB that's underneath, as you can see on this strip right here, and again, I have the lights on, so you kind of, uh, you know, you can't see it too well, but you can see right there underneath the keys, you have this little RGB strip right on the bottom of the keyboard, that's pretty dull. Like even with the lights out, it's pretty dull. Like especially when you go over here to the blue, it doesn't really shine out. Over here with the greens and uh, the reds and pinks, it, it pretty much stands out. But uh, again, that's not as vibrant as I'd like it to be. That's probably me just being nitpicky. But again, with the lights out, you can see it, but still with the lights out, it's uh, like I said, dull. All right, now I know I'm going on and on about build here and everything, right? But I think I think that's really big a uh, concern, especially at a twenty dollar keyboard, right? One other thing I wanted to point out, again, as you saw in the close ups before, the metal uh, that they stayed on there is really thin. I kind of thought it was like metal, and then the plastic would take up the whole bottom, right? But as you can see right over here, that lip out, as you saw in the close ups as well, you have the plastic with the keyboard, and then it's kind of like a sheet of metal over the top, like a real thin piece, right? Where that kind of faults us with the thin sheet of metal on top, and then the plastic is our keyboard down there. I don't think it's necessarily those two things. I think where they missed, and if you guys can see, you have rubber foot here, rubber foot here, up here, and here. These guys that are right over here really don't even touch, you know, but you pretty much have these two, and then those two over there. And what happens is you get flex right in the middle. I don't even know if you guys can see that on camera. Again, it's not like this drastic amount where it's like, oh man, this thing's a piece of junk because of that. But it's it's clearly there, and you got to press on it decently. Of course, you're pushing through metal, you know. But I think what they should have done, and I don't know, can I do this with a felt pad? I don't know. They need one right here and right here, right in the middle on both points of the keyboard, and I think that would have resolved that. We would have had good bounce across. Again, I can probably go get some felt pads for a couple bucks, put them right there, and I'll be good to go. 
Maybe not felt pads. Let me go with rubber feet so I don't start sliding around everywhere, right? Can you imagine that with some felt pads all over the place gaming? All right, so let's close out the build, right? And honestly, in my opinion, I think it gets a pass. The two things that I would fault it on, again, are the kind of chintzy USB, but that's not a deal breaker, right? That's gonna be sitting there. We're gonna be playing with our keyboard, right? But the biggest thing that really kind of upset me about the keyboard and made me stop using it faster than I'd prefer was the give in the middle. Again, it's not like horrible, but it, it's noticeable. Again, and I should put those rubber feet on the bottom. That's the biggest deal breaker is that flex right in the middle. But again, a couple of $2 rubber feet that you can get at Walmart or anywhere. So anyways, let's go on and get into the performance of it. How does it work in gaming or just daily use on your PC, right? Is it gonna cut it? And first off, what I'd like to do is give you a sound test. I'm gonna scoot just a little bit closer. It might be out of frame there, but again, our mic is about, uh, give or take two and a half feet or so from the keyboard, so it's gonna be the exact distance that, you know, most people be sitting from their keyboard. I'll scoot you a little bit closer. Again, sorry we're out of frame, but I want the mic to be right there, and I'm gonna do it right here. Again, it is membrane. As I'm talking, I'm just yakking while I'm doing a sound test. You guys are like, man, hush so I can hear the keyboard, you know? So, all right, that was a sound test. Now I got all sorts of crazy stuff coming up on my computer. I don't even know what the heck came up while I was over there typing, you know what I mean? But in my opinion, I thought it sounded pretty good. You know, the space bar is a little, uh, little loud. As you can see right here, the space bar is uh, a bit bigger than most space bars. You can see it kind of gaps down. Let me bring it in and show you. See how it just comes down a little bit. So the space bar is a little bit bigger. So it gets a little clanky, but... Other than that, it's smooth, it's a nice membrane keyboard, it's not excess press or anything. It does it, it works. But what I personally couldn't get used to, and let me see if you guys can see this, I'm gonna bring you in one more time. Just take a look at the keys, I'm gonna get you at a nice angle here, and just follow it, right? So just follow those keys. There we go, let me get you a side view as well. There you go, that's perfect right there. So what I wanted to show you there was how flush these keys are, right? I mean, you can just rub your hand across and it just goes across perfectly smooth. And that really just ruined my gaming experience for me. Cause I'm over here, you know, going to town and I'm just accidentally hitting all these other keys. Like most other keys got a little bit of an indention or they're raised up and kind of separate a little bit more. And this one, again, since they're flat and they're all right up on each other right there, I ended up whacking other keys. So as far as gaming, Sure, you can game with it. Is it the best to game with? No. But again, if you're looking for a basic work keyboard or a school keyboard or something like that, you're just, uh, you know, browsing and shopping online, stuff like that on your computer, I think you're going to be totally happy with this thing. As far as gaming, no, it's not going to be the best you can find. You know, as far as that price at 20 bucks, I don't think you're going to go wrong, you know what I mean? But again, you're going to, I think, you know, not just me and my chunky fingers, I think anyone else is going to get that fat finger uh, on there as well, you know, again, because it's just so flush right there. But I mean, all in all, like, at 20 bucks, at the regular MSRP that is listed right now as I'm making this video, it's like 29 I think, $2 coupon, something like that. No, I don't think I'd recommend it at that $30 price range, but if you see it at 20 bucks. I mean, you just, you can't go wrong with it at 20 bucks. Again, the build is solid. You know, how long will it last over time? I don't know. Will the paint start rubbing off on the keys? I'm not too sure about that. But basic usability at 20 bucks, I mean, it's solid. But if there's one thing you can take out of this video, just take that. Just because uh, so-and-so has a keyboard that's $200 doesn't make it the best keyboard out there, right? You can find very quality products for a very low price. And again, this thing totally shocks me at 20 bucks, you know what I mean? Um, but again, like I said, don't just think because this keyboard's 200 bucks makes it the best keyboard. Or the other way around, if this keyboard's 10 or 20 bucks, means it's an absolute piece of garbage. Again, just look into them, and, and I think you'll be really shocked what you find out there. But hey, thank you so much for watching this one. If you liked it, hit that thumbs up, and don't forget to subscribe for some future tech videos. Hey, I hope I catch you in the next one. Bye now.